Hi guys, I'm Pronobus and welcome to my fast introduction for Game Masters and how to use Foundry VTT. It's still in beta, so a lot of the features I'm going to show are going to change over time. But as of the end of May 2019, this is what we have. So up here at the top, we have our scene navigation that allows you to move around to different scenes. It allows you to click on it and activate to force all of your players to look at it too. Because you want them with you. Otherwise, it's going to be a very boring fight. We can also configure scenes and do fun stuff like let the players see it, even if we aren't forcing them to look at it. And show it in the nav bar so they can actually find it. But we can also do things like global illumination. So if we're outside, this makes during the day and the sun is up, we can check this. And then it's not using dark vision. It's just going to use like tree trunks and stuff like that. The compendium is where we're going to pull a lot of data from, especially if you've bought additional content, like my Patreon releases all of this stuff at a retail at a full price of $5 for the download, something like. Anyway, um, so it has 51 player characters pre-made, ready to go. Now, there's still going to be some errors because we're still working on that, but ready enough to get started at least. 51 of those times 20 is that's a thousand twenty different pre-made characters. We also have a beast area in here. Some of which is official, so you've probably heard of an Abeleth before. That being said, you probably have not heard of an Acephalus. Hmm, well let's read about the bio. It gives us just a little bit of information about them. And if we were going to make an attack, we could come in here and I prefer it stretched out a little bit more. But it's up to you and how you want it. But I prefer the three columns. Anyway, and we can make an attack. There's a nice attack button here, which happens to not be working right now. Well, I'll track that down later. Hmm. Normally that's from a mod conflicting with something. Right, let's try one other here. Something lower level since I haven't gotten done programming the higher level ones yet. Oh, why am I looking in here? Oh, I know what it is. I was warning them from the compendium. Silly, silly me. You have to import them before you can do walls. How do you import them, you say? Well, that part is easy. So we take this Ephelus and we drag it onto the map. It is now imported. The buttons will now walk. I'm glad I made that silly move because I've done it several times and you're probably going to do it several times as well. Well, you're like, what's going on? Anyway, so that's how you import. And if we want more of them, we can either import them multiple times, at which point now we have a bunch of a Cephalus coming in, or we can just drag them over from over here so we don't have quite as many Cephalus over here. We can see I already have three. <laughs> If we want to delete them all, we can come over to the left hand side, grab the actors tab, down to group select, draw a box, and hit the delete button. In general, if you want to delete something in Foundry, the delete hovering and the delete button would do it, or you can group select and delete it. Okay, so that covers a lot of the basics of combat. We did a lot of that in the players. Let's really focus in to what's different. You, as the game master, need to be able to start a combat. So let's find our party, and let's say they were fighting a bandit and a berserker. So we highlight them all, and we click the combat button. And now, lo and behold, in our combat tracker, they're all there. And so we could click the war all button. It's having a little bit of difficulty with some of them. Sadness. You guys are learning just why it's still in beta. Let's see, is there something noticeably worn with the life cloak? The... No? No, they're all... Oh! It's going down to the next line because they have huge names. So, in this particular case, the solution is relatively easy. We right click into some, if you double right click it opens up the character thing and this guy, his name is now Fiend. And we can see that that fixes him. And the Berserker. 
Nice, easy fixes. Now, I really want to see more information here. So if we go into the track of signs, we can use, if I remember right, attribute, and you can look these up, ac.value, and this is my favorite one, if I can remember the exact, there we go, need this. So it now shows me all of their ACs in there as well. And if we finish cleaning up these names a little bit, Now we have a nice clean combat tracker that has all of the ACs in one column, all of the initiatives in another. Period something? What are those? That's an optional setting we have over here. You can turn on and off. That, and you can see there's lots of these. You can make it so players have no control over the doors. <laughs> uh, but I was looking for initiative tiebreaker. So it uses the dexterity as the tiebreaker. We can also see that we could change movement counting from 5.5 five to 5.10. Okay. If we want to draw zones, we can do this. We can always double click into them and assign. If you have a really nice file texture for the fireball, by all means, feel like it. I don't have one. So right now, all fireball is going to look like this. Isn't that a special fireball? And we can see that it's beginning to loop the map at the bombs where it's out of bounds. And we have all sorts of fun containers. So that was a circle. Here we have a cone, rectangle, ray, and delete all of them. Placing tiles is great for placing traps. You can also place the Game Master's map right over top of the player map and make it, invis make it uh, hidden. So with most things to hide, you just click that button and now the players can't see it. Okay. And walls. Walls, we have a bunch of walls. So this type of wall is a wall that players cannot see through and they cannot walk through, i.e. it's a wall. Pretty self-explanatory. If we stick a X of those in the middle of a tree or something like that or pillow, it gives us a really nice trunk or pillow or something like that. Then we have invisible walls. These are walls the players can see through but cannot walk through. So they're great to line bridges over pits of lava. That way, if your players want to jump off, they have to ask for permission before they can jump off. And let's reload. Oh, I hit the duplicate tab button. <laughs> I was trying to hit the delete button and accidentally I duplicated the tab. Oops. Use or error. Train walls. These let players see through one of them, but not another. That makes them great for elevation. So you can see off the first cliff, but not off the second. Also great for balconies and other things like that. Then we have ethereal walls. These players cannot see through, but they can walk through. So wall, file, and other things are great for. Doors, these players cannot see through by default, but any of these you can always click on and start messing with things so that players can see through them and whatnot. But by default, they cannot see through them, but they can click on them to open them. And they'll be able to move through when open, not when closed. Then we have secret doors. These will look like a normal wall to the players. And finally, clone wall. So if I did something really funky, like I want this to be a perception limited, so that means they can see through one but not two. And it also has a one-way direction going on. It's secret and is currently open. That's a really funky wall. And now when I come down to here, all of the walls I'm making are just that funky. We can see all those things are the same. 
So let's delete these. Lighting. This allows you to create lights. So if you're using dark vision, they are very useful. And we can always go back up to actors and click on an actor to see how that's working. So they can see normally. They can see black and white. They can't see at all. But I have fog of water on, the, on here so they can remember where they've been in the past. Sounds. I have the sound set to global so they're not blocked by tree trunks. And we have the audio sources in here and you notice they're coming from the incarnate assets folder under public. And again that all of these sound effects, maps, whatnot are available on my Patreon if you want them. And then flags. Flag, the flag tab is used to see flags but not to place them. To place them, you open up your journal, decide what you want there, drag and drop. And then you click update. And now we have a note there. See this other colored section, purplish, grayish, revel? This is an answer, but more importantly, it's a private section only the owner can see. So your players can see the riddle, they can see the credits, but they cannot see the answer. So we've gone over how to import NPCs. The NPC browsers are very useful for if you're looking for specific things or just trying to tailor a combat for a specific level group. So those were level 4 party members. So 4 of them means they could probably fight one level 4, maybe a level 5 if they're working well, but it's going to be rather difficult for them to do that. Or maybe a level 3 and a level 2. Or maybe I want to just send in four or five level twos or six or seven level ones. And it's easy to find stuff like that. And those are just rough estimates that I'm throwing out there. Party composition, skill level, how mean you are with being strategic with NPCs. A lot of that's going to decide how you want to flavor your combat. We could do many, many videos on that. You can pop out windows by right clicking on them. Scenes! So if you want a new scene, hopefully you have a compendium with some in there. So if we just need to get to a, they walk into the first tavern and they don't like it. Well, let's search for tavern. Yay, we have three of them. Well, uh, hopefully they'll like this one. And then hopefully you'd be able to generate law real quick, which I'm working on getting my generators up and running. You can see them on the demo tab of my website but they're not quite available here yet. And we now have a new map up here. We should have probably named something different than the first one. So this is going to be the Hobgoblin's Grotto. I probably should have imported two or number three instead, but I mean, you can do as many of these as you want. You can give them all unique names, stop placing NPCs, you could drag actors on so that you can see where they are and quickly access their lore. You could drag journal entries on to pin them for quick access in the future. There is a lot, a lot of potential here to have your entire campaign very, very easy to navigate. You probably have your own state map. If not, I have one available and I might make another eventually. It's not really high up on my priority list because most people either like to have their own or do an official module that comes with its own. But you could even start pinning on a journal entry about the pyramids, a journal entry about the city down here. So I'm coming up with some ideas of the lore that's going on in here and what the crazy uh, sorcerer is this doing up in this tower. And I'm really excited about that lore and where it's going. But it's not ready for you guys just yet. Hopefully in the next couple of months. Thank you guys for watching. Feel free to poke in on your own. The main thing was trying to explain all of these and what they do to you. And the rest of the information is mostly the same old, same old the players have. Assigning characters. I almost forgot. Before you place a player character on the map, you need to come into their character, right click, permissions, and give the player ownership. If they don't have ownership, they're not even going to be able to see it. You need to do this before you drag it onto the map because it's going to set ownership when you drag it over onto the map. If you made a mistake, don't worry. Just go to wherever they happen to be. 
hover over them, and hit the delete. Correction, select them and hit the delete. And then just after you've set the permission, drag them back over. Now I think we're done with most things. Thank you guys. You can see the potential here for having sound effects for foreshadowing, not only for taverns, but also for the monster that's breathing so heavily because it's so big that they can hear of it from around the corner. Having monsters hiding in the darkness ready to pop out whenever they get in range. There's so, so much potential to have all of the lore of your world here for your players to navigate, even when you're not available to hold their hand through it. And I think that this really is becoming one of the most powerful VTTs out there. And their Patreon is $5 a month. My Patreon to get all of the content that I've shown off today is $5 a month. So even if you're paying for both of those, it's still really, really cheap. Especially because those are downloads. So you can just cancel the subscription if you don't have enough money to keep going. And play with the versions you download from there. My work is a living document that... I don't see an end in sight because there's just always so much more content, more NPCs, more generators to give you lore. You can see that in the demo tab. There's so much more I want to do. That the end is not in sight for me. Atropo says he's aiming for a full release of Foundry itself somewhere between August to December of this year, 2019. And there'll be a one-time purchase of between $30 to $50. So the end is in sight for him. He's doing a great job of adding content to it. And it's super, super exciting. Thank you guys. God bless y'all and have a great day. Bye.